that your favorite loves our show, Super Long Chat Room. It's an amazing day, it's still a holiday, an interesting public holiday for our Muslim brothers and sisters. So happy Eid to everyone celebrating. And today is special. Yes, we know it's normally as Nollywood Wednesday, but we are doing something really special. It's a special edition, and we are taking it the School of Greatness. Yes, normally I start off with the entertainment news, but hold on, the entertainment news will come on much later in the show. But I have a very special guest, and I'll just go straight, straight and introduce him to us. Yeah, we know a lot about sports, sports development in Nigeria, especially grassroots sports. You know, interesting things like beach soccer, you know, helping young people to combine education, going to school, and at the same time, you know, picking up uh, sporting activities, whether it's football or track and field. And it's my delight to introduce Mr. Shei Akinwumi. Mr. Shei Akinwumi is a lawyer, and he's the chairman of the Lagos State Football Association and the first vice president of Nigerian Football Federation, the NFL. You're welcome, sir. Hello, it's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> yes, I'm happy eat. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so remember, you can join in on the show. Our topic is really interesting. What's your favorite sport? So you could call in or send a text message on your favorite sport, or you could ask any question pertaining to youth um, sports development or grassroots soccer or soccer for female, soccer for girls. I keep saying 2019 is the year of the woman. Yes, so um, there's a lot happening uh, as regards to female soccer development. And I think that should be my first question. So what's the big thing with female so soccer development in Nigeria right now? Well, let me start from the top. Yeah. The top is that um, at the moment, the girls arrived to France uh, yesterday for the Female Soccer World Cup. Uh, and they, they arrived in great fanfare. Um, we at the NFF have ensured that this set of Falcons, which is what we call them, have got the best preparation that any team, any female team in Nigeria has received. They went camp in Austria and the same camp that the Super Eagles were for when they were on the way to World Cup. So that may seem as if, you know, um, it's something that is happening at the top. But you know, for female football in particular, what you need is inspiration for the young girls. So that should inspire many of them to achieve uh, their dreams. Um, so I think that essentially is what's happening now. There's a lot that's going on with female football. Um, Aisha Falode is doing a wonderful yes. job with the, um, uh, the league. Um, we have, even in Lagos, we have Wafa League. Um, we're taking female football to some states where it wasn't played before. Really? Yes. Um, and, and, you know, there, there are many things that are going on which we hope will impact female football very soon at wow. ground level. Okay, so that means we'll be seeing female beach soccer soon. Wow, yeah. that, that's really, really huge. So remember, you can join in on the show by calling the number screen on your screen or you can send a text message to 0603 That's our SMS number. Let me know where your favorite spot is or you could um, just ask any question as pertaining to youth development and grassroots soccer. Okay, so um, uh, we have a, a, I have a question already for one of our uh, viewers. He sent in an early question and it's about combining um, education and sports. It's a common thing and it's an easy thing outside Nigeria, but in Nigeria it's either you drop schooling for sports. So can it be combined in Nigeria? Um, Oh, that certainly can be combined. Um, can be combined. Um, what's your desires of it? And in Lagos State, we have proven that it can be combined because we have what we call eco football. It's a concept of uh, the Lagos State Football Association, and we've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did is we had the under 13s and under 15s, and we say to you, you know, no matter how good you are, if your results in school this term are not better and last term, then we drop you from the eco football team. And it has worked perfectly. Uh, we've also worked with various schools um, to get scholarships for our best players. I must at this point uh, thank Green Springs in particular. At the moment, I think we have nine of them there. Um, many of them have gone abroad, either to play during the school, you know, for the school and for Lagos State. Um, 
They played for Nigeria at various levels, under 15, under 16 levels. Um, and then we have other kids in various schools. In fact, um, a great news that came up is a girl. I mean, she needs to make you happy. Um, a girl who we got a scholarship for at an academy where there's school and football. Uh, she just got a scholarship to go to America University. You know. I think we need to hear more of this type of news. Yeah, Joy, Joy is yeah. going to America in, in, um, in September. She has a 63000 mm. per annum, uh, dollar per annum uh, scholarship. Uh, scholarship. So, so she's going to play and go to university. So mm -hmm. there are many of them that we've been doing that for. And across the country, mm. we have um, a program where we have kids who are in an NFF uh, program. And we, we the under 13s and under 15s as well. Mm -hmm. And we expose them in the same manner and try to ensure that they marry school and, and, um, uh, and uh, football. And also, even the Super Eagles, before they went to the World Cup, we got um, speakers to come to them from the, from the world of business and education to talk to them about the need for their afterlife, after football life yeah. uh, investment and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, they are. You know, a grassroots football is uh, a function of not the NFF, yeah. the function of the divisional football associations as well as the state football associations who then oversees all its divisions. Mm -hmm. So I speak for Lagos State, um, that we are ahead the football uh, administration. We have various competitions at the divisional level, but across the state, we have we've, uh, revamped the the principals' cup. Which, is, which has... Okay, hello, Matthias, good afternoon. Oops, so sorry. <laughs> hello, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, I can hear you. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes, good afternoon, Matthias, go ahead with your contribution. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, Matthias, please call back or send in an SMS to 006-013-0837. We have Principal's Cup, yeah. we have what we call yeah. the Master's Cup, mm -hmm. uh, we even have the Channel's Kids Cup. Okay, it's so that means there are lots of competitions that schools, public schools, private yeah. schools can Cup, there are many um, of them, yes. apply for and it's give opportunity. But is it only for boys? I hope no, no. they're boys and girls. They're boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's something we always want to hear. Yeah. That there are more opportunities for women and young girls in sports. Right. So go on the music break and when we are back, our guests will be answering more questions about sports and entertainment. I'm sure I know they, they are very close, sports and entertainment, so we'll have more answers to that. So let's go on the music break and we'll be back. Welcome back. You're still on to your favorite lunch hour show, the Super Lunch Chat Room. And today we have a very special guest because it's a special edition on the um, School of Greatness, and we are focusing on youth development and sports, grassroots sports and encouraging young girls and young children in sports, telling them they can combine sports and at the same time go to school and be the best in school. So remember you can join in on the conversation, what's your favorite sport by calling in and also sending an SMS to 0060130837, 0060130837. And I have a message already. This one says, my favorite sport is basketball. <laughs> Thank you, you didn't leave your name. Well, thank you for the message. Okay, yeah, before we went on the break, um, yeah, my guest once again is Mr. Shei Akiwumi, the first vice president of the Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, and also the chairman of Lagos State Football Association. Yes, and we've been in an amazing conversation with you. And um, before we went on the break, we talked about um, the fusion between entertainment, music, and sports. And you said you've had, you've experienced that because from sporting festivals, 
a lot of musicians have excelled in their careers. Can you yeah. tell, tell us about we, that? We, the, the football and, um, and music, I mean, there's a say them, mm. it's really part of the same family. Yeah. Uh, so you will find that, for example, when we had our uh, FA Cup, which is uh, major tournament in Lagos final, yeah. we had um, Dr. Uh, doctor, no, 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 the small doctor. Small doctor. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that small doctor. And, you know, just by announcing that small doctor was coming, the whole of our game today was full because wow. he didn't leave that area. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eco football itself is uh, a lifestyle. I don't know football. Mm. It's, it's it talks to the lifestyle of kids mm. and encourages them. And when we started, when we had our uh, Eco football festival a few years ago, we had Whiskey and Mitosi as our ambassadors. Yeah. And it was very full. And many of these um, stars that you see today, they, then they were upcoming. So they were all flocking to play at that festival. Yeah. Um, when we have a beach soccer, you have the same thing. So it's, it's the people who watch football tend to be into the lifestyle of contemporary music. So it's the world over, mm -hmm. um, not peculiar to us. So there's a definite marriage between football and music in particular. And music, yeah, yeah, certainly. Okay, um, uh, you know, encouraging young people um, to go into sports, you know, they have to, you know, looking, using the eyes, their visuals, what they are seeing around. So we, I have to, this is a question from Tayo too, and he sent an early question, and he's saying, what is your take on the state of sports facilities in Nigeria? And we need more stadiums, especially grassroots. Oh, certainly. The, the, studio is, uh, we have, the studio we have is in that totally inadequate. Mm. Um, Lagos is one of the big cities, but even then, we are unable to satisfy the need, the requirements for studio. We are forever uh, trying to manage. At the moment, we are hosting the Super Six of the Nigerian Premier Football League, mm. uh, the end of the season competition. Uh, and they play at Agege Stadium. So in between, you have to try and fix tournaments, fix this, fix that, fix the task sports, fix. So it's, it's a grossly inadequate. Mm. The, my view is that we need to do something to encourage the private sector yeah. to come into development of arenas. Mm. It doesn't have to be a huge arena. Mm. 2,000, 1,000, 3,000 seater um, arenas are all over, can be put all over the place. And they will be filled and used, mm -hmm. and they're commercially viable. Yeah, so commercially. I think people need to understand that they're commercially viable because we need many, many more stadia. It's a shame that we have uh, places like the National Stadium, which has gone decrepit, um, and I'm sure that the government will do something about it. Yeah. Um, the, we have the Olympic Stadium, which has been revamped. Mm -hmm. um, the governors of uh, Lagos State, and I also heard recently the Bull State in oh. particular saying. They're going to take up uh, sports very, very seriously. Yeah, and we have no doubt. If, we d if that went across the country, mm -hmm. then um, there'll be a lot more yeah. playing fields for the young children to express themselves. Yeah, it's, well, that, that's really great. Okay, so um, still talking about entertainment and tourism, football tourism. Yep. Um, how viable is it in Nigeria? Because now, you know, before we came on air, I, I was talking to you about Egypt and how Egypt is that an amazing city to go for tourism. And um, I don't know, I know we've been having some sports festivals in Nigeria, but how viable is football tourism right now in Nigeria, whether locally or I, I think that um, football tourism, again, you know, football is the biggest business oh, wow. in the world. Um, if, you, if you look at when we had the beach soccer tournament, which is a uh, calf beach soccer, which we hosted in Lagos. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, I can't remember the exact figures, but the number of fi people who came into Lagos was astounding. Wow. Um, luckily for us in Lagos, at least, the uh, new government, the new governor has mm -hmm. expressed that one of the things he wants to do yeah. is make Lagos a destination, okay. uh, tourist destination. Okay. Um, and I was at an event where he said that would include sports tourism. Okay. So I think what once we see that happening in Lagos, it would spread far and wide across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. But for sure, we've seen evidence yes, that it works. Yeah, football tourism is important. Okay, I have here um, a text message and also a bit of a question. I know football is your call, but this one is from, this one says, my name is Faye Grace. 
my favorite sport is wrestling <laughs> okay and i'm really good at it okay is there any hope for young wrestlers in nigeria well there is um and i don't know where pay grace is coming calling from okay but um if you give me the number afterwards i can put him or her in touch with the chairman of wrestling association in, in nigeria and in lagos okay. so let me take it from there but yes there's a lot of hope um, all sports Football is just a, not probably the biggest sport, mm -hmm. but all sports have their own niche yeah. and have their own um, advantages and, yeah. and roots. But I'm, I'm in touch with um, the relevant people, so I can always put you in touch. And if you're that good, maybe you might be wrestling for Lagos or for Nigeria or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that would really be interesting. So, for you, Grace, um, send me a direct message on my Instagram handle. I am Ifiuba, okay? And, um, We'll get to we'll put you across to the uh, the chairman of the wrestling federation. Yep. Yeah, so the chairman of the wrestling federation. So Faye Grace, make sure you send a direct message to me as I am if you uh, so you could fulfill your hopes of wrestling for I'm uh, representing Nigeria, but make sure you win gold. That's important. <laughs> it's important to win gold. Okay, we are still um, uh, having conversations with the first vice president of the Nigeria Football Federation, Mr. Shei Akimumi. And um, before we go on a break, um, remember you can call in and the numbers are showing on your screen or you can send an SMS to 0060130837. Okay, so we'll go on a final break and when we're back, we'll, we'll be asking our guests on um, questions relating to progressing from grassroots to being a super eagles player. I'm sure you all want to know how the process goes. So let's go on an interesting break, a music break, and we'll be back. Welcome back. You're still on to your favorite lunch hour show, Super Lunch Art Room. And it's a special edition, School of Greatness, in conversation with the chairman, Lagos State um, Football Association, and also the first vice president of the Nigerian Football Asso Federation. Mr. Shei Akiwumi. Yes, and uh, we've been talking things about football tourism, fusion between entertainment and music. Yep. And but um, I, I just need to ask you, what is the process? You know, someone who is probably uh, just done with WAEC or JAM or in the university and he's playing in mm. maybe grassroots soccer and he hopes that one day will be in the Super Eagles. So what's the process like? Does the person need lots of money, a very good agent, you know, or privileged parents? What's the process like to wearing that jersey? I'll be honest with you, you know, it appears uh, that in years past, we lost the plot. Mm -hmm. uh, before, when I was young, it was purely, you know, you had players who were in school, or who played academicals, and then they veered into football uh, at the national level, at the state level, at the, yeah. you know. Uh, and then, all of a sudden, you know, I think with the economic downturn and various other things, mm -hmm. and also the downturn in the educational system, uh, you had people who just came from nowhere, had agents or had some, somebody who could mm -hmm. influence and all of that. So what we're trying to do is get back to that system where you start playing, and we have tournaments across the country, yeah. in every single state, um, on the 13. It's called the Future Super Eagles Program. Wow. By the way, we're starting the Future Falcons, so. Yay, <laughs> something for the women. <laughs> so the Future, future Super Eagles uh, yeah. Program, on the 13 and on the 15. So, yeah. we get every, so the idea is that everybody in the state who wants to play football in the future should vying to get into the state team. Wow. So hopefully over a few years, the best players in the state team will get to the state team. And then we play zonal. So the Lagos State team will play against all those in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And then we choose the best ones from there, and yeah. they then go on to the national, yeah, uh, yeah. the 13 team, and then mm -hmm. the 15 and the 17, and so okay. on and so forth. So it's from organized competitions. Okay. So that academies will then have to register. Because we have a plethora of academies all sorts, all banner of them. Mm. But if we have regulated um, uh, tournaments, then they will come and register yeah. and we'll take it from there. So it's going to take a while, but we're on the right path, I think. Okay. 
Um, I know you've, you've quite you've said quite a lot about um, various things for football academies, mm. and you know talked about uh, private public sector uh, partnership. Mm. So, but uh, regarding to football, regards to football academy, because some kids unfortunately are not even in school, but yes. you know because of um, you know financial issues or things like that. But they have hopes and dreams to play football. Most of them you see them in public parks playing football on weekends. Is there any hope for them? Are there like football academies that like NGOs that can help them? Or does the commission at times pick up young boys from the streets? Oh yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, that's it's really sporadic because uh, there are not many people who can be like me. I mean, I, I was coming here today and I asked my daughter to stop because I was at um, uh, Oroshoki down there. So, yes, yeah. some, you know, there's a bit of traffic and I saw some guy who was, you know, who, who displayed. <laughs> so I said, let's stop and let me watch for a few minutes. And I saw, yeah. so, you know, but that can't work. It's not a sustainable way mm. to do these things. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is ensure that these academies begin to come themselves to register. Because we can't show them that there are too many. Yeah. And when they come into this community school and register mm -hmm. of their own volition, mm -hmm. because they know that the kids cannot enter the team unless they come into that competition or yeah. those sort of competitions, then they will come and register, yeah. and then we can see these kids. So even if you are not in school and you are playing for the academy, we are able to, at that young age, capture you yeah. into the net of football. Yeah. Okay. Quickly before I let you go, um, because after this we'll have to take the entertainment news. Mm. Um, what advice can you give to young girls and young boys watching who have hopes of being in a national team? Well, I think that you know, first of all, you need to harness your skills. So get into a, a, uh, an academy that is registered with your state football association okay. so that they don't you know, um, take advantage of your talent. Mm. Second is that don't eschew the virtues of going to school. You, it's not an alternative, it's a combination. Uh, even in, on the football field these days, if you're not properly educated, there's a difference between you and those who are. So you need to get educated, and football is a short uh, life. Football life is a short life. Yeah. So when you finish, you need to have a living. So my own advice is, first of all, if you go to register, register with an academy mm -hmm. that is registered with your state at FE, mm -hmm. so you're not exploited. Okay, well, thank you so much, sir. Um, we've been in conversation with the chairman, the Lagos State Football Association, and the first vice president, Nigerian Football Federation, Mr. Shei Akemumi, and he has given us insights and, you know, should I say a bit of foresight into football in Nigeria, youth development, grassroots sports, beach soccer, something we should look forward to. And it's, a good, it's good news that there will be um, space now for female beach soccer, and we are certainly looking forward to that. So thank you so much, sir. I am sure you. we'll see you soon. So we'll go on a music break, and when we are back, we we'll have our entertainment news. So go nowhere. Remember, our topic is still your favorite sport. So keep the SMSs coming. <laughs> 